G'day, Josh here with this week's edition of Chess Rush News and Community Highlights. And we're going to start things off in the game as we do have some brand new Chess Soul Rush events and quests. You can see here we have a sign-in event. You can earn a whole bunch of soul points by signing in for seven days. I've already ticked off the first day there. We've also got the upgrade quests here. Uh, play up to 15 ranked or casual games to earn yourself a whole bunch of points there as well as staying online during the next week for up to 280 minutes and the one that i've already completed down the bottom the elite quest here this is a variety of certain different quests including increased max capacity to 10 so get to level 10 in the game uh, purchase a couple of legendary heroes in a single game get a five win streak complete three combos and survive over 20 rounds. That one, you get 500 points for each of those. So lots of ways to earn more chess soul points so that if you haven't already reached level 100, that will certainly help you get a lot closer to it. Then this week, we also had a new patch. Uh, we have the new events that we just touched on there. We also have the ability to invite guild members directly from the friends pop out here. You can now go, you got friends, you got recent, and you can also go for the guild members that may not be in your friends list there. You can see the ones that are online super easily. And finally, a display issue that affected the tie version of the game was fixed. So that is fantastic news as well. Then we move on to this week's version of Ask the Devs. The first question, can you adjust the speed when heroes cast skills? Sometimes your hero has full mana and the spell is not on cooldown, but the hero still needs two normal attacks before casting the skill. Uh, the answer being it's quite a good and complicated question. Mana and skill cooldown times are two crucial parts of control uh, when the skill releases or triggers. Some heroes are impacted mainly by the cooldown time and some mainly by mana regen or regain speed. Uh, the differences each here, the differences to each hero will be unique and will require more strategic thinking uh, in terms of placing the items that you choose to place on each hero. Uh, and we're also a little uh, note here at the end here. We're also testing more items in treasure raiders. So I wonder if they will be those extra items will be coming to regular game modes in any any time soon, which will be very, very exciting because there's some fun items in Treasure Raider mode, that is for sure. Uh, next question, can you add more heroes and combos? We will add heroes continuously and have a new class that is being planned for. So that is exciting news, a brand new class coming at some stage in the not too distant future. I have no idea what it could be, but I'm certainly excited to find out. Next, can you change the hero avatar or icon to the previous ones? Uh, the, they were recently changed, there were a few little changes in game, uh, and it's taken me a little bit to wrap my head around the new icons, but I actually like them now, the hero icons, now that I uh, have learned what hero matches each icon, I do think that the new icons personally look a little bit better. Uh, the next question, can you add a tab that shows the guild members connected for easier teaming up? Well, of course, we just dropped, saw that patch hit and we have that, so that is fantastic. Next up, are you planning something for Totem Face or was it removed forever? The answer being we are work doing a rework on Totem Face. If it goes well, then he'll be respected in his village once again, as he certainly was, uh, basically he was a village idiot in terms of how frequently he was used. He wasn't very popular, that's for sure. Uh, next question, is there any chance we can get a ranked system with Treasure Raider mode, which would be awesome? Uh, is there anything exciting down the road for the guild system? Anything our wallets need to fear in the near future? Uh, really could use something else to spend on in the game. So that's a multi-part question. Uh, Treasure Raider will not be a ranked mode anytime soon, but Guild Wars are in production and a whole new class of characters are coming soon. Guild Wars, that's a big one. So it's going to be uh, some sort of system where you verse match up against other guilds, whether it's just accumulating points over a day or a week, or whether it is actually jumping on at a set time and playing certain game modes against another guild. I'm not entirely sure. Cannot wait to find out exactly what that entails. Can you make the Treasure Raider mode permanent? I definitely agree with that as it's week on, week off at the moment. It has just arrived back into the cycle, which is great news. Uh, we will consider that being the answer. And next question, for those who have reached King, if they get zero points and lose the next game, will they get demoted? And yes, you will drop back to Queen rank. Uh, will you consider adding drop items when we kill up players' heroes as opposed to creeps, creep rounds? Uh, and the answer being 
essentially thank you for the for the suggestion. We'll take that on. Uh, next question, final question: Why do mirrored lineups not benefit from synergies? Uh, the answer being, it can feel bad to lose to a mirrored team, but we hope that a match against mirrored lineups will give players with a lower hand more chances. I don't know how I feel about mirrored teams not having synergies, to be totally honest. Um, it's a bit of an awkward situation when there's an odd number of people left and there's no ideal solution, but it certainly feels like a free round if you're the lucky one that gets a matchup against the mirror. So I'm not sure what the fix is there, but hope, I believe it is something that is constantly being monitored. And if uh, Tencent believe it needs to be addressed, a fix will be in the works. Next up, we have an incredible post from Pixel Poncho on Reddit. He has grabbed all of the treasure raider item icons and matched them up with the names and the descriptions, ranked them by rarity and put them into this incredible chart. So definitely drop by, I'll leave the link in the, com in the description down below, drop by and check it out. You you'll get a great look at every single item and the icon that matches up with it. And it's really, really great work. It looks fantastic. So thank you so much to Pixel Poncho for putting that together for the community. The next Reddit post that we're featuring being uh, a poll put together by Waloop317, otherwise known as Warrior, and just ga just uh, gathering some information on what the favorite treasure raider items are. So definitely jump on once again, link in the description down below, vote on the poll, because if Tencent see what the community's favorite items are, then it's more likely that those items could make their way to ranked modes, which would be very, very exciting. So please go ahead and vote on that poll on Reddit. And the final Reddit post that we are featuring today in the video, what do the numbers mean when using the recommended formations? It's a great question. Uh, so for those that don't know, you do have the ability to go and use some recommended formations when you're in game uh, you can see it just next to the recommended lineup. You uh, click on the recommended formation tab and you've got Snake, V, Goat's Horn, Turtle, and Fish Scale. And the numbers essentially represent what, he what level you're at and the hero that is in that position uh, is based on the level. So if you're at level nine, the hog rider in this image, that'll be empty because you don't have a 10th spot for a hero. So there won't be anything out in that particular spot. So that is what those numbers represent when using the recommended formations. Now we move on to tournament results and it is the last of the double trouble tournaments from me as we've now moved on to a new format to include more people. We, I can now cater to up to 32 participants playing a new three round turbo format where the top four progress through each round. So 32 through to 16 through to eight and then the top three places in the final battle do win prizes. But the final results of the double trouble tournaments this week, the first game over the past seven days, we had Warrior coming out on top, Chris in second place and third place there to Cody. The next tournament, Kizix taking out first place, Kutsera in second, and X Crack in third place. Then we have Reliable taking out first in the next tournament, Dapley in second, and Cody making another appearance on the leaderboard there. And finally, Riku in first place, Why Not in second, and Kutsera taking out third in the last double trouble tournament we're moving on to the turbo triple so once again make sure to jump onto my discord these events are free to enter and you can win 20 10 and five dollar prizes for first second and third run them four times a week regular schedule also available on my discord we don't have a uh, premier gaming co-op clash uh, result this week as it actually takes place tomorrow or it will be uh, later today for those that are watching in America. Uh, the the news video last week was a day late, which is why the Premier Gaming results that would have been this week actually made it into last week's video. So keep an eye out for Premier Gaming Co-op Clash results next week. Now that I'm back on my regular schedule in terms of the day that I release this video on, and of course the Premier Gaming Discord is linked down below for those of you that would like to sign up for future Co-op Clashes, make sure to go ahead and do that. Now we move on to a brand new segment, which is essentially a pro tip, just a 30 to 60 second uh, segment where someone that uh, knows what they're doing, quite a high rank, uh, well known within the community, just provides a little bit of uh, insight or feedback or valuable information on a specific topic that is useful to the community. And this week we have Chaos Seraph talking about Nightingale. 
she's a very strong T1 unit that is super useful in a variety of builds and has a very underrated ability that uh, perhaps people overlook. So here is Chaos Seraph talking about Nightingale and how to best use her, especially in the late game. Okay, so Mr. Katos has asked me to explain Nightingale to everybody. So Nightingale, uh, three star will do 102 damage and gain 50% magic resist. Uh, the main thing he wanted me to explain is a lot of people just leave her wherever the heck she is on the board. And you gotta move her around so that you're silencing a certain individual. So for example, you want her in front of a general war, a kraken, a dark mage, etc. Then we move on to a sneak peek of an upcoming website put together by another community member. You may have seen him floating around the official Discord. Eggmar has been working on this and it's looking really, really good. Here is a quick look at some of the hero information that will be coming soon on Chess Rush Tips, the website. You can see here, I'm able to select uh, humans, sorcerers, I can filter by rarity, all sorts of filters, and I can click on each one to get a uh, more detailed breakdown of the stats. And there's going to be lots of extra additions coming to the site in the not too distant future as well. So it hasn't officially launched, but definitely keep your eyes open as it will be arriving very, very soon. And Eggmar has been doing incredible work producing this very valuable resource for the community. So thank you, Eggmar. Now we move on to the build of the week. And this one has been shared by Deshiba on Discord. And this is a six rider, four punisher build featuring uh, additional combos from Undead Warlock, uh, as well as Demon there. Obviously Demon ties into Punisher. This is a very good counter to the Assassin builds that are quite popular in the current meta. Uh, riders are just very good all around as well. So if you're struggling up against all of the Assassins, definitely check out a build like this rider build. Scourge is the key hero in this build as he is of course a demon and a rider and he's very good at shutting down the sword dancer that is plaguing uh, assassin builds in the current meta. He, his ability allows him to stun repeatedly as it cool, the cooldown is only five seconds. So if you can stack him with uh, items, even get him to a three star, uh, then he does quite a bit of damage, splash damage because of the Punisher and also getting lots of armor and magic resist from the Rider combo and then getting those stuns off really regularly can absolutely shut down a Sword Dancer. So this is the build, six Rider, four Punisher. And we have a, another highlight from Discord. This is by Yum for rocking a Hunter build in Turbo and basically has every Hunter except one. You'd see the Stalker Dronette three starred. Three star Legendary, three star Kraken, and then the Forest Breath, the Fire Fur, the Hog Rider, and the Famine three star as well. Incredibly powerful. And of course, he got the win first place out of eight there. So well done to Yum4 and thank you for sharing. Then we move on to another uh, screenshot shared on Discord. This one by Warrior. I'm not sure if you can see it in the front line there from Warrior, but he has a three star Dark Mage, otherwise known as Apocalypse. And this was taken the round before he went on to win this game. So once again, another three-star legendary, incredibly powerful stuff. There is no hero in the game that deals more damage than a three-star dark mage. So amazing stuff there by Warrior. And we move on to a screenshot by Chaos Seraph, once again shared on Discord. This is actually a squad clash game that I was in as well. We went on to win this one and a big part of that was the insane early Punisher luck from Chaos. He actually found the first Devourer on the second round, but by the time the third round had come come around, he has what? A two-star Nightingale, which he got in round one, two Devourers and a Lilith, which is crazy. Very, very lucky stuff there from Chaos Seraph. Next up, another post shared on Discord. Lots happening in the official Discord at the moment. This one is by Pumptastic. Look at this shop and what it does for him. It two stars a legendary and three stars Steel Fist and Siren. Incredibly lucky shop. Oh, you could not ask for anything better. So great, great luck there. I'm a little bit jealous as I don't often get that sort of luck, but uh, I'm guessing that game went very, very well for Pumptastic. 
Then we move on to a screenshot from me. This is actually a highlight from a stream a little while back. And look at the score. This was by far the closest game I have ever had. It came down to one HP each. You can see there that I was about to get the win. His final hero is about to go down, but an incredibly close game. And I cannot believe that it came down to a battle of one HP versus one HP. Once again, a, another screenshot shared by me. This will be the uh, the last of the community highlights here. This one is a squad clash game. Once again, with uh, members from my my Sword Dancers Guild, Tix, Briarios, and Chaos Seraph, and we went perfect. We went 500 and O. Uh, I guess the opponents just never had uh, the the luck at any point in the game. We didn't lose a single round. It snowballed pretty significantly, and it actually ended in round 18. So an incredibly lucky game for us, not so much for our opponents. And before I wrap up this week's edition of Chess Rush News and Community Highlights, I do want to uh, point out that there's going to be an official live stream on the Chess Rush Facebook page this weekend, hosted by Gaming Grizzly and also featuring Spooby HD and yours truly. So make sure to stop by. It's going to be at 12 noon Europe time, CET, uh, September 29th. Definitely stop by and check that out. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, some live coaching from Spooby. I'll be talking about some secrets of Chess Rush that you may not be aware of, and we'll be uh, having a ton of fun with Gaming Grizzly as well. So there's also the ability to win rewards and play with us on stream. So definitely stop by the Chess Rush Facebook page to check that out. If you have any community highlights for the upcoming week, the next seven days, definitely stop by my Discord and share them with me and maybe they'll get featured in the next video. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of my future content.